Today's video will be a bit different from the usual content I make. I will be reviewing a soldering iron Finercy has sent over to me. Full disclosure, I have not paid for this product, but I will give you my objective and honest opinion about this intelligent electric soldering iron. You can find links to the product in the video description. You have seen me soldering quite a bit on this channel, be it replacing worn out capacitors, adding pins to motherboards to measure voltages, relocating SMD components to unleash massive amounts of level 2 cache, or make EDO chips behave like FPM chips, and much more. Until now I have been using a Vela WECP20 soldering station. But can it really be that this station is from May 1990? It certainly still has the old German postal code system, but I digress. So I welcomed a message from a representative of Finercy offering to send me one of their HS01 soldering irons to have a look at. I have been using this soldering iron already in my last two projects on this channel, desoldering countless memory chips to find the faulty one, and my most recent video where I turn EDO into FPM memory to make it compatible with my 386 motherboard. In today's video I will share with you my experience with the HS01 soldering iron and hope you will find value in the information if you're looking for an affordable and portable soldering iron. Let's see what Finercy has sent over to me. I got the full package with the HS01 soldering iron, extra soldering tips, a power adapter with USB-C cable and this soldering iron stand. At the time of making this video this bundle would set you back around 90 US dollars. Shipping is free to my destination, but it may differ depending on your location. There are smaller bundles available if you do not require everything. For instance, you can choose to skip the extra soldering tips, which I certainly wouldn't, or the power adapter with a USB-C cable. This bundle would make sense if you have a laptop charger with a correct voltage rating of 20 volts. Then you can get the soldering iron for around 45 US dollars, including a nice selection of soldering tips to start with. If you don't care about any of the extras, you can get this soldering iron for less than 30 US dollars. Just be aware that you get this conical tip in the box only. It still includes the DC to USB-C converter cable and this little soldering stand. In case you don't fancy the little solder tip rest area, then I would suggest to have a look at this soldering stand for a bit over 18 US dollars. It is sturdy, heavy and can easily handle the HS01 and probably other soldering irons as well, in case you use multiple soldering irons. So let's have a closer look at the HS01 Intelligent Electric Soldering Iron. It comes in this nice little box with a small manual that is definitely worth skimming through. Tucked in foam with appropriate cutouts is the soldering iron handle, one soldering tip and a cover that you can use to protect the soldering tip during transportation or while storing the assembled device. Assembling the iron is very easy. Just unscrew the nut from the handle, slide in the soldering tip and tighten the nut again. The cover fits over the soldering tip and with a twist, locks in place. The housing of the iron is made of an alloy and feels very nice. At the end of the iron is a rubber grip with a flat surface that prevents the iron from rolling around when unplugged. For power delivery I got this silicon cable with a length of 1.2 meters. It feels to be made from high quality material and is a pleasure to work with. The power adapter is heavy and again seems to be of good quality but I did face a few issues with this power adapter which I will discuss later. The moment the USB-C cable is plugged into the handle, the little LCD display comes to life. The tip is not heating up yet, but it would once the button indicated by the blinking square on the display is pressed. But before we let the iron heat up, let's check out the menu of this intelligent soldering iron. You can enter the menu by pressing both buttons simultaneously. The language of my device was set to Chinese but you can change it by following my guide and move 3 positions to the left and then long press the other button to enter the options. Here you can switch between English and Chinese. The iron has options for screen brightness, Fahrenheit or Celsius units and comes with a child lock function. You can configure the sleep temperature which the iron will cool down to while in sleep mode. The sleep time defines after how many minutes of inactivity the iron will enter the sleep mode. In this mode the iron will reduce its heat output and cool down to the sleep temperature. The moment the iron is picked up or moved, it will heat up again and will reach the configured soldering temperature within seconds. Later in the video we will check the temperature of the tip with the thermal camera and see how close the iron is heating up to the set temperature. In case the difference is too large, the iron can be manually calibrated. The soldering iron can be operated with different voltages. You can set the operating voltage in the menu and should be set based on the capabilities of your power adapter. 
One very thoughtful feature is the ability to adapt the iron for left-handed people. When switching from right to left-handed, the iron flips the text on the LCD screen. Very thoughtful to have this option included. Ok, let's switch the heat on. The iron is currently set to an operating voltage of 12 volts and the target temperature is set to 320 degrees Celsius. Below the current temperature is an indicator telling us how much of the available power is converted into heat. After about 27 seconds, the iron reaches the set temperature of 320 degrees. With a heated tip, it is very easy to melt solder. Let's go through a few voltage settings now. According to the marketing material and the table in the manual, we can see that with higher voltages the solder melting time decreases. We have seen before that the voltage can be set in the menu. Unfortunately, the voltage is not applied right away. I had to unplug the iron from the power supply and let it reboot before the new voltage setting was applied. With the included power adapter, I could not get the iron to work at 9 volts. I got a voltage low warning. 12 and 15 volts worked without issues. But with 20 volts, the iron sometimes shuts off randomly and waits for user input after it powers back on. This causes the tip to cool down and there were a few occasions where I wondered what has happened. Here are a few takes of the iron shutting down on the 20 volt setting. So the power adapter may not be as good as I thought. There are multiple output ratings which are somehow all over the place. What is the difference between output type C and total output type C? Because one is 65 watts and the other one is 45 watts at 20 volts. Also, I don't think type A should have anything but a 5 volt output. So 9 and 20 volts do not work with the provided power adapter. Maybe minus 40. The soldering iron works well with a 20 volt USB-C power adapter for a Dell laptop. There were no random crashes and I could operate the soldering iron at 20 volts. Now let's compare the Finerci HS01 with the Vela WECP20. First, the size. There is no competition. If the HS01 can do the job, this alone would be reason enough to replace the Vela. I just don't need this heavy duty soldering station for the little projects I work on. Let's have a look how both irons heat up their soldering tips under a thermal camera. First, the Vela. The Vela has a manual knob to set the temperature but I tried to set the temperature to 320 degrees Celsius. Same what I will do later with the HS01. We can see that the Vela heats up at the connection between the solder tip and the handle. The tips of the Vela are quite short and look like this. After some time the Vela reaches the set temperature, but it doesn't stop heating. We go far beyond the set temperature and at 400 degrees my thermal camera no longer captures the actual temperature. After a while, the temperature comes down and settles around the temperature set on the dial. I certainly did not expect this. When covering the hotspot and only exposing the tip to the thermal camera, we can see that the temperature is almost spot on. The Vela hovers between 300 and 320 degrees Celsius. Now let's see how the HS01 does in the same test. The operating voltage of the iron is set to 15 volts and 320 degrees Celsius similarly to the Vela before. Wow, that heats up quite fast. After 15 seconds we reach a temperature of 300 degrees. Then the iron hovers around this temperature. The tip reaches close to the set temperature displayed on the LCD screen. I would say from an accuracy point of view, the Vela and the HS01 perform about the same. But the HS01 heats up faster compared to the Vela soldering station. Let's see if we can reach 400 degrees with the HS01 as well. And yes, it actually does hit 400 degrees. Not without asking like the Vela did, but that is really cool. Before I draw a conclusion, I want to show you how to perform a firmware update for the HS01. First you have to go to Fenerce's website and download the latest firmware. I'll put a link in the video description. You will get an archive with the tool and the firmware file. Unfortunately, the flashing tool with a file size of 10 MB is a little bit scary. I am certain that only a small number of people will trust such a flashing utility. It would be much better if the flashing tool would be open source. It would also be good to provide more languages for the flashing tool because at the moment it is only available in Chinese. If the tool would be open source, the community could help out and provide even more languages. Flashing the firmware is easy. I started by opening the flashing utility. 
Now we need to connect the soldering iron while pressing the button closer to the soldering tip to our computer using a USB-C cable. This will put the soldering iron into the bootloader mode, in which it will accept a new firmware. The flashing utility immediately recognizes the HS01 soldering iron. After selecting the firmware file, you can press the newly enabled button and the flashing process begins. And after a few seconds, the update is complete. With a new firmware, your product may become more stable or get new features. Unfortunately, I did not test this before, but the changelog states that you can put the soldering iron now back into standby mode by long pressing the button closer to the LCD screen. So, let me try if this works. And yes, indeed it works! Now I can leave the iron plugged in while it cools down. This is the same screen we get when we connect the soldering iron to the power supply. It waits for your input and starts to heat up once the user presses the indicated button. An added benefit is that it will reduce the wear on the connector, because you no longer need to constantly unplug and replug the power cable. Great that this little feature was added. So, what do I think about this soldering iron? Let me start with a few things that I think need improving. The power adapter. I don't know if I have a faulty unit, my power cable has an issue or something else. But I could not get the soldering iron to work with either 9 or 20 volts. Also, the labeling on this power adapter is questionable. The LCD screen is covered with a very soft plastic. I can imagine that it will scratch easily over time and usage. Although not a big issue, but I think with a more durable protective surface, the aesthetics of this nice looking soldering iron would be preserved for much longer. And you will always look at the LCD screen for reading the temperature. The flashing utility also can be improved. Again a minor thing, but I do not believe that many people will actually do this. But as you saw, you can miss out on nice features like putting the iron back into standby mode. My recommendation would be, open source the flashing utility and add more languages. One last thing I want to mention is that the USB-C port is embedded in the housing that prevents some USB-C cables from plugging into the connector. To flash the HS01, I used a GoPro USB-A to USB-C cable, which had the connector small enough to fit. And now we will end with the good aspects of this soldering iron. The size. This lightweight soldering iron is much smaller than the soldering station I've used before. It is much easier to find a spot for storing this tiny tool, which is a little bit bigger than a pen. Ease of use. The iron is quickly assembled, the menu is self-explanatory, and I could immediately start working with this tool. Never was I thinking that I had to get out the Vela station because it did something better. And the option to adapt for left-handed people is great. Speed and accuracy. The HS01 heats up quickly and I'm not in need of the calibration feature, because the temperature of the soldering iron tip is close to the temperature displayed on the LCD screen. The price. For less than 30 US dollars, I think it would be hard to find anything that outperforms the HS01 from Fenersi. I admit that this is literally the only soldering iron I have used next to the Vela. But I have no urge finding something else, because I'm really happy with the quality, features and the usability of the soldering iron. If you can manage your own power source to use it at 20 volts, then I would highly recommend getting the extra soldering tips as well. A single tip would cost you almost 9 US dollars if bought separately. Keep in mind that my device would not work with 20 volts, probably due to the adapter not delivering enough power. However, I used the iron at the 15 volt setting and it performed very well. So, I will actually retire my Vela soldering station and keep it as a backup. But from now on, you will see all my projects done with the HS01. I hope you found some valuable information in today's video and check out the HS01 from Fenersi if you are looking for an affordable soldering iron for your projects. The link to the HS01 is in the video description. Thank you Fenersi for providing this soldering iron to the channel. Also thank you to my Patreons for your continuous support. And with this, we have reached the end of this video. Like the video and subscribe to my channel, so you will not miss any future projects I will work on. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.